If you want to understand why all sorts of folks from all across the political ideological spectrum, people from Liz Cheney on the right, to Jamie Raskin and Joe Biden, are warning on a near daily basis in increasingly dire terms that our very democracy is in trouble right now. If you want to understand why one party's careen toward authoritarianism threatens to derail the entire American experiment, the entire republic, can actually just look no further than what happened last night. Nikki Haley's endorsement of her primary opponent, Donald Trump, is part of what has now become a time-honored tradition of today's Republican Party in the Trump era. Prominent Republicans whose closely held private views about the ex-president may not actually be that different from mine or that of any Trump critic or any Democrat end up taking all sorts of very public abuse and scorn from Donald Trump, including attacks on their spouses. And then despite all that, despite everything he said about their families and everything they've said about him in return, they turn around and offer him their endorsement. Let's take Cruz's capitulation before the 2016 election after Trump attacked his wife, Heidi. Cruz said this. Donald, you're a sniveling coward and leave Heidi the hell alone. Real men don't try to bully women. That's not an action of strength. That's an action of weakness. It's an action of fear. It's an action of a small and petty man who is intimidated by strong women. Small and petty man. I'm not, not a real man. Cruz says you're not a real man. We all know what happened after that moment. After he defended his wife, Ted Cruz turned around and endorsed the man who attacked his wife, Heidi. Who he called small and petty in that clip, turned his back on whatever was in his heart and mind when he made those comments, turned his back on our democracy, enabled Trump's presidency and insurrection in 2020, and is currently to this day working to whitewash the violence that took place on January 6th, violence that he once called domestic terrorism, before he walked that back. And just last night, in an interview on CNN, Ted Cruz refused to say that he'd accept the results of the next presidential election. Then there's Mitch McConnell, who said this after Donald Trump's second impeachment in 2021, in the weeks after Donald Trump sent a mob to storm the U.S. Capitol, putting his own vice president, Mike Pence, in mortal danger. There's no question, none, that President Trump is practically and morally responsible for provoking the events of the day. No question about it. Now, there's a pattern here, too. Trump also attacked Mitch McConnell's wife, Elaine Chao, with a very ugly racist slur. He attacked McConnell regularly as well, at one point saying McConnell had a, quote, death wish for working with President Joe Biden to fund the United States government. And yet, as with Ted Cruz, Mitch McConnell also folded endorsing Donald Trump for president in 2024. So add to those two, Nikki Haley. Here's what Nikki Haley said about Donald Trump after the January 6th insurrection. Quote, I think he's lost any sort of political viability he was going to have. He's not going to run for federal office again. He went down a path he shouldn't have, and we shouldn't have followed him, and we shouldn't have listened to him, and we can't let that ever happen again. We can't let that ever happen again that being Trump as president. Our friends at Morning Joe compiled some of what she had to say about Trump during the Republican primary contest this year. Take a listen. Times change, and so has Trump. He's gotten more unstable and unhinged. If you mock the service of a combat veteran, you don't deserve a driver's license, let alone being president of the United States. We've seen him get confused. He was confused about me having something to do with keeping security away from the Capitol. He was confused when he said that Biden was going to run us into World War II. He's not qualified to be the president of the United States. It's not normal to insult our military heroes and veterans. He was thin-skinned and easily distracted. It's not normal to spend $50 million in campaign contributions on personal court cases. There is no way that the American people are going to vote for a convicted criminal. 
It's not normal to threaten people who back your opponent. He went and was trying to buddy up with Putin. Every time he was in the same room with him, he got weak in the knees. And it's not normal to call on Russia to invade NATO countries. Donald Trump has done all of that and more in just the past month. Now, one of the combat veterans, she calls him out for attacking combat veterans in a few of those clips. One of them is her husband. Much of what she said there, though, on the stump, could have easily have come from another well-known, nationally recognized conservative Republican named Liz Cheney. But Liz Cheney took a different path and has paid a steep political price for being unwavering in her very similar lines of critique and opposition to the ex-president. Could have come from a Democrat. It's a lot of the indictment of a second Trump presidency, as well as the last one that you hear from President Joe Biden. But despite everything that she said, as well as Trump mocking her husband while he was deployed, Nikki Haley made the decision yesterday to endorse that person that she described in that way, Donald Trump. And when she did, she turned her back on her own voters, many of whom make the same arguments Nikki Haley made about Trump. They include up to a fifth of the GOP primary electorate in states that voted for her months, up to two months after she dropped out of the race. What Nikki Haley bending the knee to Donald Trump says about the state of our democracy is where we start today with some of our most favorite reporters and friends. The executive director of Republican Voters Against Trump and the publisher of The Bulwark, Sarah Longwell, is back with us, plus retired U.S. Marine Corps lieutenant and founder of Democratic Majority Action Pack, Amy McGrath, is here. Former Republican congressman, MSNBC political analyst, David Jolly, joins us. And with me here at the table, NBC News correspondent Von Hilliard is back with us. Um, Vaughn, uh, any sense of whether, uh, or just uh, tell, tell me your new reporting on how this came to be. The number one, there was no phone call between the two camps. I'm told by Trump and Haley advisors that since March 6th, when she dropped out of the presidential race, that she and Donald Trump have not connected by phone. A Trump advisor told me that she has not reached out to establish contact with the former president. So that announcement last night was done on her own accord here. And I think that it's telling, right? Doug Burgum, the North Dakota governor who's been on the campaign trail with him, right? It was a year ago that he told our Chuck Todd that he would ever do business with Donald Trump because of the company that one keeps is reflective of oneself. Uh, Tim Scott was somebody who was critical for a long time of Donald Trump, especially after January 6th. And so Nikki Haley is really the latest to fall in line. What's amazing about your reporting yesterday, and it's why we, we dug up McConnell and, and Cruz's past clashes with Trump is how deeply personal they were. I mean, Nikki Haley and her husband had a public social media broadcast fight with Donald Trump this year in, in the last eight weeks. Right. I think that, you know, we've lived this. And I'm glad that you talked about Ted Cruz, because back in 2016, I was on the road every single day with Ted Cruz, including the day that he dropped out of the race that morning. It was an Evansville, Indiana barbecue shop when essentially on his way out, he said Donald Trump is amoral, a pathological liar, a serial philander. Two and a half months later was the Republican National Convention. I was there in that arena in Cleveland, and Ted Cruz was slated to speak. And I got the remarks ahead of time. And in his remarks, there was no endorsement of Donald Trump. And so when he went out on the stage, I was actually in the bowels of the arena, not expecting much fanfare, because like, why would Ted Cruz endorse the man who mocked his wife, right? And who he had just said all of these things about. But then he took the stage. And what made this clear to me, and eight years later, we're still playing this out with Nikki Haley, that moment was the shot across the bow for Republicans. Because when Donald, or when Ted Cruz said the line, if you love our country and love your children as much as I know that you do, stand and speak and vote your conscience. He didn't say vote Donald Trump. The arena erupted into booze. And it was that moment I looked around at others who I was standing with. It was no longer about just Donald Trump. It was the fact that the Republican Party had become Donald Trump. And this was a movement that was turning on likes of Ted Cruz and anybody that was in the way. It was not just the New York delegation, right? This was the Republican National Committee, the key activists of the party. And that was the message that was sent to Ted Cruz that very day. If you want a future in this Republican Party, you've got to endorse Donald Trump. He did that weeks later. And all these years later, there is person after person, Nikki Haley, the latest, that are evidence that their relevancy in the Republican Party today, not just with Donald Trump, but among voters, is by standing in line with him.